Hello, I'm Seema and welcome to part 6 of the chapter Hydrocarbons. We were doing the nomenclature of alkanes. Moving ahead with the discussion of the nomenclature, in this video we are going to do the reverse of nomenclature. That is, in the previous videos we were given the structure or the formula of a compound and we were supposed to write its name. In this video, we are going to discuss what do we do if we have the name and you're supposed to write the structure from it. So, not wasting any time, let me move straight to the problem. The question is that you have to write the structure of 3-ethyl-2-2-dimethylpentane. Whenever you are supposed to write down the structure from the name, you know when we are writing down the name, what do we do? We first write the word root. That is, the, um, the, we count the number of carbon atoms and we need to know the uh, longest chain. And from the longest chain, we get the word root, that is the parent hydrocarbon. So here we see the parent hydrocarbon is pent, it, is, it has got five carbons and an, since we are doing alkane, so it, it, they'll all be anes. But the ane shows that it is a saturated hydrocarbon, which has five carbons. So the first thing that you would do is you would make a chain of five carbon atoms. So always look for the parent hydrocarbon. So one, two, three, four, five. You make a chain of five carbons. Then it is three ethyl. There is one advantage that we have when we are writing down the formulae from the uh, names. When you're writing down the name from the formula, you have to find out the locant, you know, you have to see which direction are you going to be counting from. This is kind of easier because everything you already know and you would rather count from left to right. You can choose your direction. You may, of course, count from right to left. That is your choice. But then you already know which direction you're counting from. And then you go ahead and write the name. It kind of becomes easier. You'll see how. So it says that there is three ethyl on the third carbon. I'm counting from this direction. This is my first carbon, second carbon, third carbon. On the third carbon, I have an ethyl group, which is C2H5 group. Okay, three ethyl, two, two dimethyl. This is the second carbon. So this has a methyl here and a methyl group here. Three ethyl, two, two dimethyl pentane. And this is pentane. So now you've got the basic carbon skeleton. You've got all the substituents. All you have to do is fill up the hydrogens to complete the uh, tetravalency of every carbon. Now let us fill up the hydrogens here because carbon is tetravalent and every carbon should form four bonds. So looking at the basic skeleton, whatever, if any carbon is deficient in the number of bonds, less than, if it has bonds less than four, we fill it up with those many hydrogens. So look at this carbon, this forms only one bond. So it should form four bonds. So it needs three hydrogens to complete four bonds. This carbon is forming four bonds, which means it is a quaternary carbon. Since it's a quaternary carbon, it already forms four bonds. It does not need any more bonds to complete its uh, octet and to complete its tetravalency. This carbon is forming three bonds, so it needs one hydrogen. This is forming two bonds, so it needs two hydrogens. This is forming one bond, therefore this hydrogen carbon needs three hydrogens. So in this way, we fill up the hydrogens, and by filling up the hydrogens, we get the complete structure of the compound. So that is how we wrote, we'll write the entire, the complete subject uh, structure of the compound. And so now this is question 13.4. It's the solved example of your textbook. So using the same logic or the same method, let us now write down the structures of these compounds. The compound is 3, 4, 4, 5, tetramethyl heptane. 3, 4, 4, 5 are the four locates. Tetra means there are four, methyl means there are four methyl groups. And it is an heptane. So what is the parent hydrocarbon? The parent hydrocarbon here is heptane. And what is the word root? Hept. Hept means that there are seven carbon atoms in the chain. And ane means that the, all the seven carbon atoms have only single bonds. It is a saturated hydrocarbon. So let us first write down the carbon chain. One, 
2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7. 7 carbon atoms, this is heptane and the substitution is on the third carbon. 1, 2, 3, this is the third carbon. There is a methyl group here. There are two methyl groups on the fourth carbon, CH3, CH3. And on the fifth carbon, there is one methyl group. Now, this is 3, 4, 4, 5, tetra. There are four methyl groups, tetra, methyl, heptane, because it has got seven carbons. Now, fill up the hydrogens. One bond, three hydrogens. Two bonds, two hydrogens. Three bonds, one hydrogen. So, what are you doing in each step? You are completing carbons valency of four whatever number of bonds it forms after that whatever is left to complete four you will add those many hydrogens this already has four bonds with four carbons so no need of a hydrogen this has three bonds therefore one hydrogen two bonds two hydrogens one bond three hydrogens and that is how you get the structure of the compound the next compound is 2,5-dimethylhexane now the compound is hexane, hex is the word root. So hex means six carbon atoms, ane means it is saturated. So let us write the carbon chain first, one, two, three, four, five and six, six carbon atoms. And the substitution is on second carbon and the second, third, fourth, fifth and the fifth carbon. And what are the groups? Both are methyl groups, CH3, CH3. So 2,5-dimethylhexane. So fill it up with hydrogens. Three hydrogens here. One hydrogen here. Two hydrogens here. Here there should be two hydrogens here. And one hydrogen here. And three hydrogens here. So that is how you'll get the structure of this compound. Now this is question 13.5. It is also a solved example of your textbook. And the question reads that Write the structures of the following and why are the given names incorrect? The names that have been given are incorrect, they are wrong. Yet you can write the structure of the compound from these names. And then once you write down the structure of the compound, you have to say, you have to tell why is the name wrong? And if the name is wrong, what should the right IUPAC name be for the compound? So let's start. It is 2-ethylpentane. Okay, so according to the, uh, we'll use the same method to write down the structure. Pent means there are five carbon atoms. So I should make a chain of five carbon atoms. One, two, three, four, and five. So on the second carbon, he says, there's an ethyl group. Ethyl group means it is CH2, CH3. Or I could write it below it also. CH2, CH3. Three. Now, this is 2-ethyl and this should be pentane if I fill it up with hydrogen atoms. And take a look now. If this was the structure of the compound that I had and I asked you to name it, how would you name it? You would The first thing you would do is you would look for the longest chain. And in order to find the longest chain, what would you do? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Or you'd start from here. 1, 2, 3, Four, five, six. This seems to be a branch of just one carbon atom. Rather than on the second carbon, you have a branch that has two carbon atoms. And here on the second carbon, you have a branch that has only one carbon atom. Which will you choose as the parent chain? You will choose this as the parent chain. And this will become the branch. Logically, that is how it should be. So, if you had to write it down again, how would you prefer to write it? So, uh, or let me first name it and then we'll write the structure. So, this would not be pentane, it would be hexane, first of all. So, it is hexane. And the methyl group, which is attached, let me fill up the hydrogen, CH3. This has three bonds, so it has only H, two bonds, H2, H2 and H3. Okay. Now, this is the methyl group and this is the main chain and if I count, which direction will I count from? One, two, three. The locant I get here is three. And if I count from here, the locant I get is four. So obviously I count from this direction. So this is three methyl hexane. 
That is the name of the compound. So let me rewrite the structure. Why should I make a chain that is uh, twisting? Why would I not make the branch there? So let me rewrite it in a more organized fashion. So it doesn't look really, you know, the structure doesn't look very complicated for no reason. Now, this is hexane. So let me make this this structure. It is hexane. So there should be six carbons. One, two, three, four, five, and six carbons. And on the third carbon, you have a methyl group. So this becomes H3, this becomes H2, this becomes H, this is H2, H2, and H3. Three methyl hexane should have been the name of this compound, and this should have been the structure. So obviously, the name that has been given is not right. Similarly, this is the last one that we would be doing for the video. 5-ethyl, 3-methyl heptane. That's the compound. So let us first make the structure to know what's wrong. Because after making the structure, we, it will become apparent what, what went wrong when it was being named. Now, this is hept. Hept means, according to this, there are seven carbons. So let's make the seven carbons. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Yeah. Heptane. Three, five ethyl. One, two, three, four, five. Five has ethyl. That is CH2, CH3. 5-ethyl, 1, 2, 3, 3 is methyl, CH3, okay, 5-ethyl, 3-methyl, heptane, yeah, structurally, this, uh, the compound seems to be right, you know, uh, even if we like we did here in this case, we turn the ethyl that was shown as a branch to be a part of the chain. That cannot be done here because even if I do the counting, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, then the eth ethyl will come on this side. It is one and the same thing. So that is not the problem in this case. So what is the problem then? 5 ethyl, 3 methyl. If I count from this direction, my locants are 3 and 5. And if I count from this direction also, my locants are 3 and 5. Do you see this? I'm getting the same locants by counting from both the sides. And when you get the same locants and you're writing down the uh, names of the substituents in alphabetical order, I told you in the previous video, then why would I not choose the locant for the lower alphabet, why would I not choose the lower locant for the lower alphabet? So E comes before M, therefore E should get the locant 3 and M should get the locant 5. That is the problem here. So let's write down the structure. This becomes H3, this becomes H2, this is only hydrogen, this is H2, this is H2, H2 and H3. And the name of the compound will be 3 ethyl 5 methyl heptane right so that was the name of the compound let me just see where is it yeah 3 ethyl 5 methyl heptane that is the name of the compound so with this i'll wind up this video and with this, we actually complete the nomenclature, the topic nomenclature of alkanes. And we'll move ahead with the uh, preparation of alkanes in the next video. So if you found the video helpful, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, recommend it to your friends, and please keep returning for more videos in chemistry. Thank you for watching and bye-bye for now.